I'm still missing one bloke on the historic Michael, Michael Dibb? Exactly, <laughs> on that big, massive six-cylinder Honda. The, um, well, the last couple of uh, meetings, we've actually seen him in action on the, uh, the bike that Wayne Gardner rode at the Island Classic here a couple of years ago, the CB... Uh, CB900 uh, Honda. But, Look uh, at that Suzuki of um, Robbie Phyllis. That's just it, a It actually looks better now than what it did when they were first released with uh, the new wheels. And look at the swing arm on Robbie Phyllis's machine. That is uh, a work of art. They Next didn't come with swing arms like that when they brought these guys. These guys have been so and close and so competitive. And bike number 107 also there in the, the second row of the grid. Everyone's gone katana mad, haven't they, uh, Braxy, yeah, on. Roger Gunn on his katana. That's a, a well, good to see uh, Craig Ditchburn and Barry Ditchburn both out there on the uh, the 31 and 321 machines. That's the rider that was missing from the uh, the third row of the grid. Just about ready for a start, Braxy. They're off. One, Another two, great start go. from Robbie Phyllis. Oh, replay, a replay of, the start. of the start. We might be looking at a uh, jump start here. And. Uh, Oh, jeez, I don't know what happened there, but look at Robbie Phyllis get a uh, Robbie flying Phyllis leap there off from him. Mr. Scotty Webster on the Moto Martin and around the outside. It's, we could write a song about that, actually, as Bo Beaton takes the Irving Black Lightning 1300cc into second spot. That's the closest he's been to uh, Robbie Phyllis in either of the previous two oh. races. And now Tenepi's also got a fantastic start, as has uh, Robbie Ruwalt on the bike number uh, 50. Was what Ruwalt on his... Uh he got a good start. No, there he is on bike number 62. And uh, he's just behind uh, the loose cannon, Laurie Fife, as they tip down into uh, turn four on the uh, first occasion. But uh, Beaton has uh, got a bit of work to do to try and find his way past Robbie Phyllis, who will try and make that katana even wider than it was in the first couple of races. And uh, Beaton will be trying to get past, but uh, trying to go with them, more importantly, is uh, Scotty Webster on the, uh, the Moto Martin framed uh, Kawasaki engine. Look at the lead they've already pulled out over the battle for 4th, uh, 5th and 6th place between Andy Lind, Albert De Hennepy and Laurie Fife, Braxy. Yeah, but those three will get caught up in their own battle. They won't care what, who's out in front. They'll have a nice little time of it as they've done in the previous races. But good to see Scotty uh, Webster so close to these pairs. So hopefully he can get a tag along down the straight and give him a bit of a hurry up because he's a bit of a demon under the brakes as well. They always jokingly say that he rises to the occasion at the big events, but... Uh, he always does, and he loves this Phillip Island circuit. And probably more importantly, the machine loves this Phillip Island circuit, the French endurance frame. Look at the moto, look at the speed of the Moto Martin as he pulls out from behind Bo Beaton and tries to assault Robbie Phyllis down the front straight. He's on the outside of the track. I think Phyllis is going to have a better track position, Braxy. I think he was assaulted and almost peppered then by Scott uh, Webster as he came into turn one. No jump start, so that's OK. It was just a different angle for the... Uh, from the cameras to have a look at, but um, Bo Beaton, I thought he would have been uh, powered past uh, in, in the back section, but Robbie Phyllis still in control. Oh. Now here we go, we've got Albert Tehenneby up the fourth spot, and Andrew Lind and Laurie Fyth. But uh, the action at the front, we've got to look at this as they go into Siberia for the second time. Four laps to go after this one, and we'll just see if we can get Bo Beaton on that Irving Black Lightning 1300cc against the 1000cc, or the, sorry, the 1100cc of Robbie Phyllis on that uh, Katana from back in about 1984, I think they come out, 83, didn't they? Because it was before that, it was just the GSX E models. That, uh, oh, around the outside oh. comes Bo Beaton. That's a brave move to get out into the marbles there, and there'll be a lot of marbles there from all the uh, bikes we've had going through there in, in the last, well, <laughs> since last week. You'd have to be off your marbles to try going out there, Brad. But uh, Bo Beaton, I think it shows the level of desperation. He knows he's got to try and get past Robbie Phyllis. You can't give him an inch. He'll take a mile. And uh, as they come round now through the top end of the circuit, this is where Phyllis's katana really has the advantage. He's got that little screen that he can tuck down behind. He's got the massive horsepower. By his own admission, the thing was lighting up everywhere on Friday. And uh, also looking at this battle for uh, fourth, fifth and sixth. Laurie Fyfe and uh, Andy Lynn go elbow to elbow down the front straight. Albert De Hennepy's in fourth place. Then it's uh, Glenn Carroll's up to uh, seventh place. A great ride from the, uh, the Z Owners Racing Machine of Glenn Carroll, bike number 53. That's a Macintosh framed Kawasaki engine in that one, Braxy, and is an absolute treat. Robbie Ruolt on his Z1000J in eighth place at the moment. And Craig Ditchburn in, again uh, expiring the old TZ, so that's uh, another one that's gone to the pits. Keithy Higgs in uh, ninth place on uh, 26. Bobby Mariner in uh, tenth place on bike number 40. And the uh, yellow katana of Roger Gunn, Braxy, back to 11th place.
And Ken Wooden's ahead of the TZ 750 of Jock Williams that he's been battling with every race so far this weekend. That's good to see. He might have sweated the flu out of him by having a bit of a steer around here. Might be feeling a bit better tomorrow, our uh, co-commentator up here. But... Uh, Robbie Phyllis, um, he's found something. He's not, well, you know he's a bit of a hard charge and a bit of a hard nut, but uh, he's really pulled something out of the bag because Bo's getting a bit frustrated. He's trying lines that you wouldn't see in a schoolboy um, detention yard at the and moment. And Robbie Phyllis got the fastest lap of the race too. Braxy has beaten, goes down the inside and uh, just puts his bike in a position that Robbie Phyllis can do nothing about. But Phyllis tries to come back up the inside, not quite got the corner speed of Bo Beaton, nor the determination of the young man from Coffs Harbour. I thought he was looking, Robbie Phyllis was looking across at Bo Beaton on the way exit of that MG corner to see where if the kill switch was anywhere close that he could grab hold of. But uh, I think the, uh, the horse may have just bolted now as Bo Beaton comes round to uh, complete that lap. A 42.924, fastest lap of the race for Bo Beaton. I expect the next one, Braxy, will be faster now that he's got some clear air in front of him. But can Robbie Phyllis, Mr. Superbike, come up and uh, put the Katana into position to uh, get ahead of Bo Beaton? I think Bo Beaton's got the greater corner entry speed, Braxy, and that's what's going to make it the most difficult for uh, Mr. Superbike to get up there and uh, place his Katana in a position to get him ahead. Yeah, I think uh, that you're right. The horse has bowled once he got a bit... He uh, could get the the Irving in front and get the clear track, get the clear air without having to worry about where Robbie was on the track and being dictated to where he could put the power down and such. But uh, Robbie Phyllis certainly not giving up without a decent fight on that uh, Mick Hone Suzuki 1100. And it's an immaculate piece of kit that he's got there. And uh, the, the evergreen Robbie Phyllis, I know he's uh, a bit older than me because uh, so he'd be approaching, well, 35 or 40 by now, I'd say. <laughs> That may be a small understatement there, Yeah, just quite. Well, but, we uh, well, the other thing is, though, too, that uh, he's got plenty of racing experience and Bo Beaton's only in about his uh, third or fourth year of uh, serious road racing. And to be going elbow to elbow with, uh, with the rider of the calibre of Robbie Phillips, that's one of the reasons why we see Bo Beaton continually coming back and riding this machine. They've had some great battles here over the years. And, uh, look at Robbie Phillips, still full of determination. You can see the... Uh, the thousand yard stare through the clear visor of his AGV helmet as he comes round through the top end of the circuit. Scotty Webster still in third place, although a fair way behind this battle for a third place. He hasn't been able to go with them. The battle for third place is on in earnest. Albert Tehenepi is still leading Laurie Fife and Andy Lind around through the top end of the circuit. They're coming through turn 12 now and onto the straight. Glenn Carroll still in seventh place in a fantastic ride on the Macintosh Kawasaki. Robbie Ruolt in, uh, in eighth place on bike number 62. And unfortunately, Braxy uh, looks like Craig Ditchburn right to the back of the field and may have even pulled into the pits. I'd say he would have done. He, look, he was going backwards at a great rate of knots. But uh, am I mistaken or is Robbie Phyllis a little bit closer than he was? Maybe, maybe just getting that uh, extra mumbo of the Suzuki down guard and a straight allowed him to get closer. But once this Irving gets into the corners, it is uh, got the uh, Araldite stuck to it and just follows that line. Doesn't even move offline, does it? I love it when uh, the riders make us look like we know what we're talking about because Bo Beaton's last lap was his fastest lap, the first time he's had some clear air in front of that uh, Irving Vincent, a 141.463. And I think he did a 140 this morning, uh, so that's just fractionally off his uh, time from this morning's race, but he's also had very limited time with clean air. Laurie Fife back up ahead of Albert to Hennepe now, so uh, Fife on 23, the loose cannon. He's fired a couple of balls in Albert's direction and uh, managed to uh, get ahead. Albert Hennepe on that sharp tune Kawasaki. That is one of the most magnificently presented bikes in any category this weekend. And that's been ridden very, very well as well. Great race from uh, Albert in the, uh, the race before. Back to the front now. I think Robbie Phyllis is closer, Braxy, than what he was at the exit of this corner on the last lap. Is um, Bo Beaton just teasing him, giving that tantalising taste of exhaust smoke so we can get a bit more inspiration to see if he can track him down? Because uh, in the previous races, once Bo's been in front, he's managed to pull away and uh, get a really big gap, but he hasn't been able to do it. Oh, Robbie Phyllis faster on the last lap by yeah. nearly one second, Braxy. We can pick that again as they oh, commence their last lap. He's gone past him. I think there might be something wrong with Bo's bike or not. Oh, no, he's around the outside of him again. But, geez, he hosed past Bo Beaton on that Irving, didn't he? He really thought he had it. But uh, Robbie Phyllis hopefully doesn't get too excited. If he can stick with him, Phil, if he can stick with him on this last lap, maybe the mumbo of the GSX might be enough to uh, get the... Um Katana in front. This would be an 84 model Katana, I think, because the GSX 
Uh, range started in 1985, I do believe, with the GSXR 1100, the first ones. They just went past Dave Nicholson on the 800 machine and uh, he got out of the way to let them past. And also got a fantastic view of Mr. Superbike in, uh, in red hot action at the moment. Maybe Bo Beaton just let him ahead to say, hey, look what I can do at turn two as he went straight across the front of him. But Braxy, there's only a couple of corners left now. And I think that Bo Beaton has probably got enough of a lead over Mr. Superbike to uh, ensure that... Robbie Phillips won't be able to use the very long legs of that katana. I bet Bo uh, Beaton's not feeling too comfortable at the moment. He could hear the force of the cylinder behind him, but uh, we'll see what Robbie Phillips can do if he can get the good drive out of here and maybe close up the gap. But you're right, I think Bo's got just enough of a, a gap at the moment to take three from three from the Angove Winery's uh, historic support races here at Phillip Island. Look at the body language of Bo Beaton. He's all over it. He's wringing the neck of that Irving Black Lightning. And no way is Robbie Phillips going to be able to catch that as he gets the chequered flag for three from three with Robbie Phyllis taking three second places. Big interest though, Braxy is the uh, the battle for uh, fourth, fifth and sixth because Scotty Webster looks like he'll come round to uh, complete in uh, in third place. Here comes Scotty Webster now on that Moto Martin Kawasaki bike number 76. The real battle though is his battle for third place. It looks like, is it the loose cannon, Laurie Fyth that's uh, going to take fourth place ahead of Albert Tehenepi on bike number eight. So Fyth on 23, Tehenepi on eight. Onto the start, finish straight. It is Laurie Fife on 23. Goes for the second, third, fourth. Twist of the grip there to make sure he stays ahead. Andy Lynn comes home to complete in uh, sixth place. Another fantastic ride. And uh, looks like the next rider through will be uh, Glenn Carroll. So uh, there he goes now. Glenn Carroll on that Macintosh Kawasaki. Oh, that was... What a fantastic weekend of racing, Braxy. And I think that sums it all up. That was, look at Bo, he's going, that was fantastic. They're both having a cack under the helmets and uh, that's great camaraderie. And uh, Bo Beaton must be pinching himself to think that he's racing with one of the legends. And this is a true story, the legends of Australian motorcycle racing for the last 50 years. Robbie Phyllis and now uh, maybe the Bo Beaton. the last Beaton. 50 years you've given away your race, Maxie. <laughs> well, no, I'm... Yeah, <laughs> look, oh, he's got the thing on the back wheel, the old Irving Black Lightning. Don't know if the owners would be too keen on that with it not having the best oil pump in the world if it has got an oil pump they'll <laughs> pour it all down the back but um Scotty Webster, they're all having a bit of a chuckle and uh Look i can imagine Laurie. the bench racing when they get back to the pits in about 30 seconds time.